And so we're encouraging you to be a selective sifter as you pick from the past or as you pick from the present or as you pick from the future. But we are encouraging you to care about how you feel. In fact, we're encouraging you to only care about how you feel. In fact, we're encouraging you to, for the most part, forget about your action journey altogether and let it be a vibrational, emotional journey. Because if you will do that, if you will care more about how you feel about what's happening or about what not's happening, what's not happening than you do about whether it happens or not now you've got it you see so someone says to you how are you coming on that goal that you've been talking about and you say it's right on track and they say oh has it begun to unfold in a way that you can see it and you say it's right on track and they say but has the money come in has the lover come in did you find the house you've been looking for did you lose that weight you've been wanting to lose what's happened and you say it's right on track and they say no I don't think you're understanding my question what physical evidence do you have that is giving you the license to feel better and that's when you say I have left that old modality far far behind because I found out that I was going about it backwards when I demanded that I get what I'm looking for first so that I can have an emotional response to what's already happened now I'm not creating now I'm just observing I'm just regurgitating I'm just responding I'm just having knee-jerk reactions now I'm a conditional lover now I've joined the ranks of the other millions who are trying to control the conditions so that I can have a better feeling in response to the conditions I'm no longer creating conditions and if they are very wise in listening to your wisdom they will say well how would someone go about creating a condition and you would say by using the condition as I always must to help me conclude what I would prefer but then immediately taking my eyes off of the not preferred condition while I expectantly reach for an improved condition and they would say I didn't really hear what you said can you give it to me in easier terms and you would say to them I've learned that I'm healthier in my imagination than I am in my observation because when I imagine I can make it just the way I want it to be and they would say oh you're a dreamer you're not a realist and you would say oh I never face reality I create reality I don't look at what is and regurgitate more of it I look at what is automatically launch desires and become the fuller version of that which I am and then I feel my way into vibrational alignment with what I've become so then they would say you mean you don't set goals and you say not as such I'm the blessed one you know <laughs> you mean you don't set goals you don't identify what you want oh yes I do that all day every day I can't stop doing that when someone's rude to me I want them to be nicer when I'm rude to someone I want to be nicer when someone says I'm bad I want them to understand that I'm good when someone feels that they are bad I want them to understand that they are good when I or someone is sick I want them to be well when I am confused I want more clarity I can't stop deciphering life and I can't stop setting goals but something I've learned is that I automatically set my goals and I've been setting so many of them that I've created this magnificent vibrational escrow the source energy has all lined up and waiting for me and now my work is to become vibrationally worthy of all of the good stuff that I've been asking for vibrationally worthy they say what in the world is vibration how can somebody be vibrationally worthy and then you will tell them the greatest secret of all to be vibrationally worthy you just have to care more than anything else more than life itself because it is life itself how you feel and then you have to be willing to work your thoughts around in whatever which way you can until you find relief from thoughts that don't feel good and while you gradually replace them systematically with thoughts that feel increasingly better well how does one go about that well you look out at people who annoy you and you feel the discomfort of that annoyance and then rather than asking them to change their annoying behavior you just work it around in your mind so that they don't annoy you so much your friend would say that seems hard and you would say it was hard for me at first because at first 
I was so accustomed to just responding to whatever was. I would see something and I would have a knee-jerk response to it. But later on, I began to understand that the knee-jerk response was just my initial reaction to their vibrational offering. And when I saw things that did not match who I am, I felt the discord of it. But then I became aware that I didn't need them to understand me or to understand my needs or wants or to agree with them in order for me to feel better. And in that acknowledgement came my first and my true recognition of my power and of my freedom. When I discovered that I no longer needed one other person on the planet to be even a little bit different in order for me to feel the way I wanted to feel, I found instant freedom and I found something else. I found an ability to love them anyway. And when I found that I could love them anyway, I returned to the true nature of my being. And without even knowing I was doing it, I closed the gap between me and me. And I began to be the source energy being in a physical body that I was born to be. And then, as far as I am concerned, you can tell your friend, then I had my first real birth where all that I was meant to be was focused with me in this moment. And then your friend might say to you, digging through horrible things that have happened even in this day somewhere on the planet. You mean you can look at this wretched experience and you can find joy and love in it? And you say, no, I can't look at things that are horrible and feel good. But by practicing looking at things that feel good, the horrible things don't show up in my life. I have to look pretty hard to find them. Law of attraction doesn't bring me the horrible things when I've tuned myself to the well-being things. And then say to your friend, and anyway, as I look out into this world, there's way more that's going really, really well than is going really, really wrong. Do you know how hard we have to look to scrape up the bad stuff? Who was it that decided that it was our job to find all of the problems and solve them? I found it, you can say to your friend, to be utterly overwhelming. And so I began to tune myself to the good things of life. And more and more, I am so tuned to the good things of life that only the good things of life show themselves to me. And then your friend might say, don't you feel a little guilty living such good life when there are others who don't? And then you say to your friend, I found out that I could not get sick enough to help sick ones get well. And I could not get poor enough to help poor become prosperous. And I could not find enough confusion to help others be clear. I discovered that through the clarity of my example, by caring about how I feel and every day contouring myself to vibrational alignment with what feels good, that I not only became the non-physical energy in a physical body that I was born to be, but then, and only then, did I offer a strong enough signal that those who were seeking that sort of clarity could make their way to me. And then you can say to your friend, I believe that you are such a person. I believe that you have made your way to me because of the clarity of my being and because of the power of your wanting. I do not believe that if you did not have something for me and I did not have something for you, that we would even be having this interaction. Law of attraction has put us together for a reason. And then your friend might say, are you saying to me that you have all of the answers to all of the questions and that you are the only one who knows what's right and that I should try to figure out what it is that you are living and I should try to copy your life experience and believe as you believe and do as you do. And you will smile and say, no, not at all. I am not here to tell you what to do or to guide your experience. I just want to teach through the clarity of my example that you are the creator of your experience as I am the creator of mine. And you get to choose everything that comes to you as I get to choose everything that comes to me. And I would not for a moment assume that I should be able to choose for you. I haven't lived your life. I haven't walked in your shoes. I haven't lived your contrast. I haven't given birth to your desires, but you have. I say, as a teacher that you were born to be, I have come forth to express the example 
that we are all blessed beings who deserve a wonderful life and that we get to choose the details of that wonderful life bit by bit, piece by piece. We get to conform to the well-being of our choice and the universe and law of attraction will make it a reality. And then your friend may very well say to you, I think that you are nutty. I do not understand vibration. I do not understand emotion. I do not understand anything that you have said, but it has been nice talking with you just the same. And you will say to your friend, I have enjoyed this interaction immensely <laughs> because I understand who we all are. And I think that life is supposed to be good. And if this conversation has helped you to reach a little bit more for something that feels good to you, then I think that we've had a very good moment together. But what you do is totally up to you. And friend, you will say, in any event, I absolutely adore you. Whichever way it goes, never question my love for you. And then your friend might say, then you will always be there for me, right? No matter how bad my life gets, I can count on you to be there. And you will say, no, I will be like the spirit within you. When you choose something that feels awful to you, I won't be there. Well, what kind of a friend are you? They would say, well, I'm a true friend. I'm a friend who has deliberately worked my way up the emotional scale. And I'm mostly in vibrational alignment with things that feel really good. And I will promise you that I will stay here as best I can. And I will offer that signal so that anytime you get anywhere near it, law of attraction will put us together. And so I would like to make this promise to you, my friend, you will say to your friend, you will find me when you are feeling best. When you are loving yourself most, I'll be there. When you are loving me most, I'll be there. When you are loving life most, I'll be there. When you are loving your government most, I'll be there. When you are loving your experience in the moment, I'll be there. But what if I need you? What if I find myself in a horrible place? Well, you may not see me, but there will be someone there for you. Someone perfectly vibrationally matching where you are, who will amplify for you where you are. And just beyond that person, who is amplifying exactly where you are will be another who represents the best that you can reach for from where you are. And eventually you will be led by one to another and by to another to another and by another to another and another to another. And eventually you'll find your way back to me. Oh, so you do think you have all the answers. So you do think that you're the one who is the, the only one that is in the good place. And then you will give them the most important message of all. No, I'm not guiding you to anything specific, just to the feeling of well being that is inherently who we all are. I want to be, you can say to them, and from what we feel from you, you can say it accurately. I want to be for you what I promised you I would be. I want to be an example of someone who always strives for fullest connection to source energy. I want to be a catalyst who will be like a satellite dish that will beam pure positive energy into the atmosphere that surrounds me wherever I am. I want to be an example of one who, while I may not always be exactly vibrationally up to speed with who I am, I promise you that I will always be an example of one who knows whether I am there or not, because I care about how I feel. And when you get there, and when you are willing to talk about it to anyone who will listen, you will then be the teacher that you've come forth to be. Because as long as you're willing to beat the drum of what's happening on the planet willy nilly indiscriminately, as long as you are willing to give your attention to things, whether they feel good or bad, as long as you are willing to become a vibrational match to anything that does not feel good to you, then you are not the teacher that you've come forth to be. You are a regurgitator. But when you say, I care how I feel and every day, all day, I deliberately make choices of what feels better and what feels better and what feels better until I've tuned myself on most subjects to feeling really, really good. And now I can see by what law of attraction brings around me that I am a vibrational example, the vibrational example.